High Second Grade. Welcome back to lesson number two in unit one. This lesson is called Relate Addition and Subtraction. In this lesson, we will practice using our math mountains to help us solve story problems. We can also call these word problems, where we must read very carefully and decide whether we should use addition or subtraction to help us solve the equation. Let's first start with a review of math mountains. As you can see on our screen, we have a blank math mountain and we have four different equations. If you were with us yesterday, you will know that math mountains help us to show addition and subtraction. Let's do a quick review with this blank math mountain. Let's say that I have the add ends five and four. Now I know that my top number is the king of the mountain. He is our biggest number. So in order to find our missing sum or total, we're going to need to add our two add-ends. I love that they're called add-ends because it really reminds me that we add them up to get to our total. I'm going to use touch points you might want to use a different strategy. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Five plus four is nine. So nine is my biggest number and it gets to live at the top of the math mountain since it's the total or the sum. Now let's go over to our four equations. Let's start first with our two addition equations. What were the two numbers that we had to add for this problem? Five and four. So for my first equation, I'll do five plus four equals nine. Now, here's the trick, second grade. Do you remember what we had to do for our second addition equation? You're right, we had to flip flop the two numbers. Instead of five plus four, let's do four plus five. And we still get the same total or the same sum of nine. All right, our e addition equations are complete. Now it's time to move on to subtraction. Let's see, I remember there was a trick on to how I knew which number came first in subtraction. Do you remember what that trick was second grade? Oh, I remember now. The king of the math mountain always comes first for subtraction. He loves subtraction. So my king, nine, is going to come first. Let's pick one of our add-ends to subtract first. How about let's do nine minus five first. And what's my last number to finish up our equation? Nine minus five is equal to four. Okay, now we need to sort of do a flip-flop but the nine gets to stay in the same spot because the king comes first. Now, instead of nine minus five, what should we do second grade? Nine minus four, and that will give us five. Great job. Today, we are going to be looking at this type of problem. As you can see over here on the side, we have some words to read. As second graders, we are going to need to read story problems or word problems, and we're going to need to decide if this problem is asking us to add the numbers up together or if we are going to need to subtract. Usually when I add, I'm putting things together. I'm getting more of something. And when I subtract, I'm taking something away or I'm having less of it. 
So let's look at our first problem here to see what we think we might need to do. Amy has nine toys. She gives three toys to Mike. How many toys does Amy have now? Hmm, let's think about this. So, using my mathematical thinking, it says Amy has nine toys. That's how many toys Amy started with. She gives three toys to Mike. Hmm. So if she's giving those toys to someone else, do you think that we should add nine plus three? Or do you think that we should subtract nine minus three? Hmm. I'm thinking that we should subtract because if she is giving her toys to someone else, she's going to have less of them. And if we have less, we know that we're going to subtract. So she started with nine toys. She gives three to Mike. And we need to find out how many she has left. Now, before we solve this equation, let's put these numbers over on our math mountain. Now, we are subtracting. In, in our last example, we said there was a trick to subtracting, didn't we, second grade? We said that we knew that the king of the math mountain always comes first in subtraction, doesn't he? So if nine is our king, where does the king live on the math mountain? Up at the top. So nine goes at the top of the math mountain. So that must mean that three and our missing number go at the bottom. Now you can put the three on the left side or on the right side. It's totally up to you. I'm going to put the three over here. And my missing number can go over here. If you flip flop those, that is fine too. Now I am ready to figure out what that missing number is. Okay, so I know my total is nine and I'm subtracting three. So I'm going to use my touch points nine, eight, seven, six. So Amy has six toys left. I put the word toys because that is our label. All mathematicians label their answer. Make sure you look back in the problem to see what the label is. Let's try another example together. Kellen is at the beach. Oh, I love the beach. I hope you all got to maybe go this summer. He sees five smooth shells. His sister sees three rough shells. How many shells do they see all together? Hmm. So I see Kellen and his sister. Kellen sees five shells. His sister sees three shells. And we want to find out how many they see all together. Now, I see the word together. Do you see that part in all together? When I think of the word together, I think of joining up to become one group. Like if I have pencils and markers and I put them together, I make them into one group. So I need to decide if I need to add or subtract to put them into one group. What do you think, second graders? I think we're going to be adding in this problem. Because if I want to know all together, that sounds like I'm looking for the total or the sum. Let's write an equation. 
So Kellen sees five shells and his sister sees three shells. How many all together? Now, when we look at this equation, I'm adding five and three. And do you remember where we put those numbers that we add? Down at the bottom. Now you can pick which side you put the five on and which side you put the three on, but I decided to keep them in the same order. And if I'm looking for five plus three, then I'm missing my big king at the top of the mountain. Looks like we're going to need to add to find our sum. Five, six, seven, eight. Sorry about that, number three. So they found eight shells all together. Shells has that S-H sound at the beginning. Eight shells. Practice one more example together today, second grade. This example reads, Alyssa spends 10 minutes working on her math. Her brother Tyler spends four fewer minutes working on his math. How many minutes did Tyler spend on his math? Now, let's take a look at what we know. We have Alyssa and Tyler. Now, Alyssa spends 10 minutes on her math, and Tyler spends four fewer minutes. Now, when you hear the word fewer, what do you think of? Do you think of more or less? You're right, I think of less. Anytime we hear the word fewer, that means it's less. Like I have fewer pencils than Miss Huey, or Mrs. Benson has fewer students than Mrs. Rinaldi. Fewer is less. So if I were writing this as an equation, if Alyssa spends 10 minutes on her math and her brother Tyler spends fewer minutes, do you think we would need to add or subtract to find less? You're right, less is subtraction because less is smaller. So he spends four fewer minutes. So we need to find out how many minutes he did his math for. Let's look at our equation. What's the trick? Who always comes first when we subtract? The king. You are right. So let's put our king up at the top. Now the four and our missing number need to go at the bottom. We can put them wherever we would like. Now I'm going to use my touch points. You may use a different strategy. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. So Tyler spent six minutes on his math that day. Alyssa spent 10 and Tyler spent six.